Hi everybody, Chris Henderson here from Northern Tribe Outdoors. Today I'm going to do something that's uh, pretty much uh, out of the wheelhouse of this, uh, this YouTube channel. Uh, usually I'm doing hunting and fishing and all of those kinds of things, but today's going to be something a little bit different. With the uh, global pandemic that is uh, virtually assured at this point, um, I, I think it's kind of important to uh, take a look at your preparations and what you're doing to get ready for what's maybe possibly coming and uh, in fact likely coming and one of the issues is your respirator um, you see all over the place uh, people are using these face masks uh, things like this uh, you know uh, there's big giant lines in Seoul South Korea this week uh, just try to try and get one of these but the issue with this is that this is a not meant to be used over and over again. If you were to go outside and use this and suck gallons of uh, air through this respirator, um, then there would be virus that would uh, either particles or something that would get unstuck on the outside of this mask. You wouldn't want to bring that into your house or uh, you know have it have it with you in close contact or even touch it. And, and then touch your face, etc. So uh, the question becomes, how many of these do you need? Well, if you haven't already stockpiled hundreds and thousands of them in your uh, secret bunker location or something like that, then you know, you're probably pretty fortunate to go to Home Depot and find some on the shelf. Um, but even then, uh, how many are you really going to want to buy? So I came across an article that was published by Oxford and uh, on their Oxford Academic. And it was an article that came out of uh, basically University of Nebraska and uh, had a couple of people in it and uh, somebody else from the US Air Force. And what they were evaluating was three different decontamination uh, processes uh, to use on an N95 mask. And they, uh, they tested it with a virus, an influenza virus, and uh, I think it was H1N1. And um, to see whether these uh, decontamination methods would actually decontaminate the mask, but then in addition whether the mask would be harmed or would still continue to be useful. And uh, the three methods uh, were using ultraviolet light, um, the germicidal one, 254 uh, nanometers as far as its frequency goes, not just a regular black light or something like that. Um, and then they also had a, uh, a couple of steam treatments, uh, one with just a regular microwave and uh, some other, other apparatus. They didn't have diagrams or apparatus, which was unfortunate, but um, at least in the article that I saw. Um, but they did describe it. And what I realized was that the easiest one for me would be the germicidal uh, ultraviolet light. The important thing about this light is that it is 254 nanometers. Um, has to be at that frequency or it's, it's not doing the work of, of killing off the germs or uh, destroying the DNA. And uh, so I decided to go with, uh, with that one for one simple reason. Uh, I didn't want to put uh, an infected mask in my microwave. I didn't want to necessarily go to Goodwill and, uh, and buy a microwave uh, for that purpose. Um, and I just felt like it'd probably uh, have a better chance of success with the with the view, UV light. Um, so here's what here's what I built, and I'm just sharing this to to throw it out there. It may be something you're interested in, um, maybe something you want to share uh, for people that are affected by this. And uh, quite honestly, we're probably all going to be affected by this. So in order to build this, uh, basically, it's just a light box. Um, I decided to go with a, uh, a regular old black rubber made with the yellow lid um, and uh, on top of that I put some foam core board that I happen to have a bunch of. Um, it's about like this, this kind of foam core, corrugated uh, foam core board and I wrapped it in tin foil to provide a, a reflective surface. My thinking on doing that is twofold. Uh, one, this UV light, you do not want this UV light to escape. Um, you, this will blind you. Uh, so don't mess around with this. I'm going to have it locked out so that you cannot open the lid without unplugging it. Um, that's my goal uh, because you don't, you don't want to mess with your eyes and you can't see these light rays. And so, you know, invisible stuff that burns up your eyes, bad news. So I, I put uh, tin foil, a couple layers of tin foil over the top of this and then uh, just pop riveted it right onto here. I got just a basic lamp um, 
thing for, for the light bulb and uh, just put it to the top. Uh, as far as in the box itself, I, I did the same thing. Um, I put the, uh, just the, wrapped the core, foam core board on there and then, and basically wrapped it in tin foil and uh, stuck it in here, um, pop riveting it to the sides. So when I put this down and close it, uh, then basically all this reflective surface is going to bounce those lights around. And uh, my hope is um, that it will hit all the viruses. In addition, I took an old uh, freezer tray uh, basket, basically, old freezer basket, and uh, I took some of the legs off and uh, or took some of the, the bottom part of the basket, turned it upside down, and what I'm able to do is just set that right in here uh, like this, and I can have my uh, mask sitting on top. Uh, I got some things there so that I can you know spread them out uh, in case it needed to be uh, spread out this is the mask that what I like about this mask is is that it's, it's got the the uh, filters but in addition it's reusable in the sense that um, you take the filter out and change the filter out um, it is very very secure on your face and I think one of the big things about why masks don't work is because people put their hands under them to scratch their nose or it comes loose or comes to the side or something like that and if you're in an environment where there's a high probability of the virus floating around you just don't want your mask to come off um, and in weather uh, you don't want your mask to get all wet and soggy and, and, and come off that way either. So I chose that style of mask uh, with these replaceable filters, and now I'll be able to decontaminate my filters. So basically, uh, you just put the lid on here and uh, plug it in, and the light turns on, and it uh, floods this box with UV uh, radiation and uh, kills off all of the viruses. And uh, that's my plan for decontaminating an N95 mask. And I don't know if that's going to be uh, helpful to some folks. Um, you know, I see pictures on the, uh, on the Internet of what people are doing to try and uh, protect themselves and, uh, you know, deal with the, the lack of masks. And uh, so I'm hopeful that maybe this will uh, help somebody give somebody an idea. Um, if you see it and think it's a good idea, you probably better order your light bulb now um, because it probably won't. Uh, stick around already when I was ordering this one I noticed that uh, there were um, it seemed like the quantities were limited so. anyway I hope this is helpful to someone and uh, maybe you're in a situation where you're in a high risk environment and uh, you need to have some way that you could possibly disinfect your mask and uh, you know whether it's 100% perfect or whatever I'm making no claims other than the scientific study that I'm attaching at the bottom and um, be real careful with your eyes. Uh, your eyes are, are really, really valuable. Don't be in a situation where this light could ever be exposed to your eyes. And uh, hopefully you stay safe out there, and, and hopefully somebody finds this useful. God bless and take care.